Hey, what's up guys? It's Dustin O'Daffer here, and I wanted to show you how you can use AI to learn new skills when it comes to programming. So as you can see, I've got this really cool world here, and I found this on YouTube. There was a tutorial. There was a tutorial from MakerTech about an intro to voxel chunking in Godot. And I actually was using a previous project before I found this, but it was so poorly optimized that I did some more searching and found these project files. I joined the Patreon, and I'm new to Godot. So I need a way to get started quickly, and that's where AI can help me a lot. See, I noticed when I hit play in Godot, I just see this world here, and I can't actually play as a character. But if I look at the page in the Patreon, it looks like there were other tutorials made that should include a way to actually like walk around and enjoy the world as a player. And that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to jump right in and pretend I'm actually playing a game and then kind of work from there in terms of, you know, developing my dream Minecraft knockoff or whatever you might call this. So I went over to I went over to Cursor and I just asked it, hey, I recently downloaded this project from Patreon and I think it contains the previous updates, which should include the ability to play as a character. And I'm like, I'm new to Godot. It's kind of like Minecraft. I hit the button. It doesn't work. Da, 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 da. I think I uh, here, here's where I um, opened and I tried playing it from. Did I open the wrong one? And Cursor, in all of its brilliance, will just start reading the code. And it's like, hey, fascinating. I'll start reading. Da, 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 da. And it's still working. It's been working for over a minute. And it's thinking and it's trying to figure out exactly how all of this code comes together to help me, the user, be able to get the result that I want. And like I said, I'm new to Godot. I've done a lot of programming with Python and um, Svelte, and I built some full stack applications like chatgptkiller.com, which you can go and check out if you want to be one of the first users. I'd love to have your opinion on it. But I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to GD script. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to Godot. So that's why having an AI to help can be super helpful. So I'm going to say, hey, did you get cut off? Because I think it got cut off. I think it stopped there. So we're going to ask it to continue working. And hopefully in a few minutes, we should have a good answer to where I'm at. Do I have to go and download something else? Do I got to go and build a new player class? Oh, here, here we go. I had a look at your world dot tscn file and I found the issue on line 21 the player node is set visible to false this is why you won't see the player or be able to control the character simplest way to fix this is to change it to true okay um well I'm going to try that so I'm just going to do a search for equals false and I'm going to set this to true because I'm a very very intelligent smart programmer that's all I'm going to do I'm just going to assume the AI is correct <laughs> But uh, hey, that, that's what vibe coding is all about. It's about experimentation and learning. Okay, so we're gonna try playing again and see if just setting it to true will instantiate a player. And it, it did not. It did not instantiate a player. I am not a player. I'm still just a camera floating in the sky. So I'm gonna paste this in here. I changed it to true, but everything is the same. I'm still just a camera floating with no movement. Okay, so I made that change and Godot said that that was correct, but we're still just a camera because we have two cameras in the scene and the one that is the top level camera, I suppose, is being given priority. And it went ahead and just did a little edit here. So let's give that a try and see if it works. It didn't work. Imagine my shock. Well, so it seemed to get that wrong again. So I'm gonna tell it, hey, if if either of us don't understand this, what should I do? I gave it a little bit more context on the off chance that it would actually figure out what's going on. Sometimes you have to be very precise in explaining the exact symptoms for the AI to identify what's going on with the code. But oftentimes you do get AI that's very confident because you started it off with the wrong context, you gave it the wrong prompt, and it's gonna tell you, I fixed it, when really nothing got fixed at all. Um, I usually don't let it screw around like this for more than a couple prompts before I start, you know, taking matters into my own hands. So I'm going to give it one more shot at this. And if it can't figure it out, I'm actually going to start over with this conversation using GPT-5 and see if GPT-5 is able to come up with a better way of approaching these problems. My camera cut out there for a second. Fuck. 
and check it out. It worked. We are back in the world. My camera kind of cut out for a second, so we didn't get that initial reaction from me, but it worked. Like, the last response, it was able to figure it out. Um, now we can run and jump and, you know, walk around. It's a little bit laggy, so I should probably add some settings to make it so it's not always full screen. And better rendering, you know, would be nice too, because right now the lighting is just, it's very, um, yeah, it's not great. I mean, look at that. We've got this full world set up. This is exactly what I wanted. All the controls are there, and the world is actually, like, rendering and pretty well. Like, this is impressive stuff. Yeah, I gotta hand it to Maker Tech. This is actually pretty impressive. Now, what I want to note here is that after I got this working, I was like, hey, can you spawn me over the terrain? And it was able to... It got closer. It's not consistent. I kind of have to, like, fly my way over to the terrain as I fall. Um, and then I asked a really important question here, which is, to summarize, all of this is working, but, you know, did, did you hack this together? Because the previous developer had a method of setting up their project, and I want to be sure that you understand the design pattern. So what can you tell me about it? Were the changes you made the correct way to do this, or did you, did you just kind of hack it together? And it's like, yeah, that's an excellent question, and it discusses the initial design patterns that it had and it explains why it initially misdiagnosed the problems um, and how it fixed each one of these problems and of course the conclusion which is that no it wasn't hacked together the changes were not hacks um, this project structure is sound and we can build from there effectively and that's really the power of vibe coding guys uh, I didn't have to read too much of this. I'm just asking the AI the right questions. That way it's able to give me responses that are meaningful and accurate. And I'm able to move forward getting good results like spinning up a Godot project with minimal experience that gives me everything I need to start building a game that's voxel generated. So thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more stuff, you can go to my school community where I have code for a fast API, Svelte front and back end pattern. If you'd like to try building a SaaS, that's a really great place to start. Uh, make sure you install Python and uh, everything else is explained in my other tutorial on this channel where I talk about how to set that up. It's called Easy Deployments with Fast API, and it's a great way to get started with a, a secure front end, back end pattern if you want to create a software as a service application. And it's actually the same infrastructure I built ChatGPT Killer on. ChatGPT Killer is my app that I've used to synthesize some pretty cool information. It's, you know, in beta, but if you'd like to try it out, you can go to chatgptkiller.com slash app. Uh, it'll probably ask you to log in and make an account and all of that. And you actually get some pretty powerful responses. Um, like I was able to get a response based on all of the work that I'm doing about my identity and how I have to recatalyze my identity into a content creator. And it kind of it kind of recreated a message that was pretty generic from the AI about how to change your identity to being a content creator to looking at a YouTube video that's about how to change your identity. And it's a very powerful video that someone created. And it was able to pull all that information and rewrite its response, which is for someone like me, I love to be able to read something that's like really strongly written based on existing information by very smart people and have it applied directly to my life. So that's what ChatGPT Killer does. And if you'd like to try it out, you're more than welcome. So subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next Vibe Coding tutorial.